Good morning. As y'all can see, I'm not Pastor Marty. Um, I received a call from Marty um, Wednesday afternoon late. And his daughter was home from college up at Macomb. And she came down with COVID. <laughs> so he and his wife uh, tested Friday. And they tested negative. And so they were, he was planning on still coming in. And then I got another text from him late yesterday afternoon or somewhere in time yesterday afternoon. And I was informed that uh, he and his wife both were showing symptoms. His wife was, uh, had shown more than he did. So he said, would you please go ahead and fill in? So y'all have to put up with me today. And uh, anyway, so let me get, I'm, I'm just now getting my papers and stuff. So y'all have to bear with me a little bit. And uh, anyway, we got our, go ahead. All right, please stand as you're able as we sing our opening hymn, God of Grace and God of Glory. Hymn number 577.
Go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I told y'all. I'm not all set. You want uh, children come up? Oh. Come on up here, buddy. You coming up? Come on up here. Huh? Have a seat. We're going to talk about our God is faithful today. Did you know that? Huh? Thank you. How many of you believe God's faithful? I got a scripture I'm going to read here a little bit. It said, now there was a man in Jerusalem called Simon, who was righteous and devout. He was waiting for the consolation of Israel. And the Holy Spirit was upon him. He had been, it had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he would not die until before he had seen the Lord Jesus Christ. That's from Luke 2, 25, 26. How many of you know anything about Dr. Seuss? Huh? You ever heard anything about Dr. Seuss? Well, we're going to talk about Horton and... Horton happened to be an elephant. And uh, anyway, there was a bird named Maisie. I could have changed that a little bit, but I didn't. I'd probably got in trouble if I had. But anyway, Maisie had laid an egg. And she was sitting on that egg and she was trying to hatch it. And Maisie was a lazy bird. And she kept getting tired of sitting there and tired of sitting there and kept getting tired. Of and so she started trying to find somebody that would sit on her egg for a while and let her take a vacation. Well, nobody nobody would fill in for her. And along came Horton. Now, like I said, Horton was an elephant. And apparently, I guess, elephants are faithful. But anyway, she finally talked Horton into sitting on that egg for her, going to try to hatch it. And uh, anyway, she takes off. She flies to Florida. Now, if you were down in Florida from this time of year, what would you think? So she got lazier. And she decided, I am not going to go back up there and lay that egg. So she stayed in the warm and the sun and the sand. But Horton stayed faithful. He stayed and he stayed and he stayed and he stayed. Through all kinds of weather and all kinds of, but Horton never gave up. And he did what he said. He was faithful. And that's how God is with us. He's faithful to us. He keeps his word like he did with Simon. And he told Simon that he would not see. Then there's some more story about Simon. He was very old when this happened. And he was in the temple, or came in the temple the day that Mary and Joseph brought the baby Jesus in to dedicate him to God. As Simon was in the temple, and as soon as he saw the baby, the Holy Spirit told him exactly who the baby was. And he knew that God had kept his word that he would not die until he saw the baby. And now, now he is okay. How many of you made a New Year's resolution? How many of you going to keep that resolution? I quit making them a long time ago because I never could keep one. 
But God doesn't do that. God makes and is faithful to us. Our goal in life is to be faithful to God. Let us pray. Dear Father, as you are faithful in keeping your promises to us, may we be faithful in keeping our promises to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And thank you for coming up here, buddy. You too. And you too. <laughs> See, the scripture reading today is 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 1 through 11. Now, brothers and sisters, I want to remind you of the gospel I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. By this gospel you are saved if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you. Otherwise, you have believed in vain. For what I received I passed on to you as the first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures, and then he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 of our brothers and sisters at the same time, most of whom are still living, though some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then, all, then to all the apostles, and last of all, he appeared to me also, as to one abnormally born. For I am the least of the apostles and do not even to be deserve to be called an apostle, but because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and his grace to me was not without effect. No, I worked harder than all of them, yet not I, but the grace of God that was with me. Whether then it is I or they, this is what we preach. And this is what you believed.
bear with me. This is where we're going to start changing things a little bit. I'm not speaking on what Marty was going to speak on. I'm going to read a scripture from Galatians 6, 6 through 10. Anyone who receives instructions in the word must share all good things with his instructor. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature from that nature will reap destruction. One who sows to speak the spirit from the spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. Thanks for the reading of God's word. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our God and our Redeemer. Amen. I'm going to speak this morning about courage. Webster's Dictionary states that courage is the quality of mind that enables one to encounter difficulties and danger with firmness without fear. How do we seek courage? How do you seek courage? Courage can appear in many different forms. How anyone handles difficulties in their own lives. How they would handle a change in our lives that we do not plan and had no control over or how to handle. Something like the death or illness of a loved one or a best friend. Think about the changes in lives of so many people in the Bible, how they handled their difficulties. Abraham was told by God to sacrifice Isaac in Genesis 22. For Abraham not to question God about this sacrifice had to take all the courage he could muster up and come up with himself. He took all he needed to build a fire and make the sacrifice God told him to make. He had to travel 50 or 55 miles in rough country and he didn't have super highways to travel on. He made this journey and it took him three days. How many times did he think about what he was doing and the courage it would take out to follow God's instructions? Noah was instructed by God to build an ark, a large boat large enough to hold all his families and his son's family and to each of every animal on earth were to be placed on the ark. He had to know how much pressure this would put on him and his sons who helped him build the ark and how much courage it would take to handle all this pressure. But without question, he followed God's instructions. He had the courage. I read a story in Guidepost about a young woman named, named Gabrielle. We'll call her Gabby for short. When she was 12 years old, she was diagnosed with a disease called Frederick's ataxia. This was a progressive disease that would affect her speech and her mobility, her nervous system. This disease would slowly slur her speech and take away her mobility. She did her best to hide this disease because she didn't want the people to know about it. By the time she entered high school, her classmates started noticing her speech changing and her stumbling. She could not bring herself to tell anyone about this disease and she was bullied and made fun of. She finally decided to stay out of sight to keep people from finding out about her disabilities. She had no friends and no one to talk to but her family. To go on longer walks, she had to be pushed in a wheelchair. She finally asked for a dog. Her mother finally gave in on a condition. She had to pay for the dog herself and she had to take care of it. She went to pick out the dog and she did. 
and bless her heart, she chose a coon hound. Mostly because she had read a coon hound was known for its beauty, strength, and above all, courage. Courage. She and the dog became very close. They were always together. They took walks together and slept together. One morning she woke up and her dog Lizzie, as she was named, was not in the bed with her. She got out of bed and crawled until she found Lizzie. Lizzie was lying down and not moving. They called a vet, made an appointment, and took Lizzie for a checkup. She prayed that Lizzie would be okay. After the exam, it was determined that Lizzie had swallowed a rock and had to have an operation. After the operation, Lizzie did not respond as she should, and she got worse. She had to have more tests that Gabby could not afford to pay for. A class in a grade school not far away heard about her problem and decided to raise money to help her out with the expenses. When the teacher took, brought the money to her home, he asked her, if she and Lizzie would come and talk to the class. After the tests were run, it was determined that Lizzie had a disease much like Frederick's ataxia. After all they had been through, the friendship formed, she had basically the same disease that Gabby had. She brought, thought about just staying at home and not going to the class in the school and talking to them. Finally, she got up the courage to face the class and made her visit and her talk. Since then, she has made numerous talks and gave her testimony. She found the courage to meet her disabilities. In the scriptures, Mark, Peter, and John, having seen the light of Jesus, they took his teachings to heart, beginning to travel, and they taught, and they healed in the name of Jesus. They were so strong and excited in their preaching, teaching, and healing that the authorities decided that they had to be quietened. They had to shut them down. They called these men before them in the Sanhedrin and told not to speak or teach or heal in the name of Jesus because they could take courage from their time with Jesus. They were filled with a zeal in the Holy Spirit, and they could not stay quiet, and they continued to preach in Jesus' name. They, through their courage, they carried the word and spread the word for the rest of their lives. There are a lot of stories about famous peoples, not all famous peoples, or jerks, nuts, or rascals, as we read a lot about anymore. Some of them are good. But some really do things for others. A few years ago, NASCAR driver Jeff Gordon was driving for Ray Abraham. As with most sports, winning is one of most gold everyone has. And Jeff Gordon was no different from anybody else. And he was a winner. Ray had a young son that Jeff was very close to. He arrived at the track one day only to find that Ray had to leave and go home. Little Ray J was sick. He had to be taken to the hospital and a bone marrow test was run. Ray J had leukemia. Jeff kept up with Ray J's condition daily, and it was a very difficult time for him, and it was very tough going. Chemotherapy, radiation, long stays in the hospital. During all this, Jeff kept asking himself if there wasn't something more that he could do. What could he do to make a difference to a kid battling cancer? Another race driver that he was friends with hosted at a race 
a Make-A-Wish Foundation for families at the racetrack. Jeff wanted to get involved. Some of the people kept telling him, no, you don't want to do that. Because meeting these kids and their families is very tough. Taking courage from his ability to drive race cars extremely fast, he decided anyway to become involved and signed up with Make-A-Wish Foundation. As his first visit with the family got closer, he became very nervous, but excited at the same time. Then he met Gil. Gil was, had a rare bone disease. His bones were so weak that some were broken at birth. When he arrived, he was in a wheelchair. His family was with him, and he was wearing a number 24 Jeff Gordon hat and jersey and had a grin on his face that stretched from one ear to the other. Gil was very small. His body was small and it was gnarled because of his bone structure. But he raised his hand as high as he could for a high five. Not knowing what to do, Jeff said a quiet prayer and finally raised his hand. Gil tapped it and drew his hand back. They talked for as long as Jeff could and he finally told him he would be thinking about him during the race that day. Through this meeting with a sick child, the Make-A-Wish Make Foundation, working with the Leukemia Society, the Bone Marrow Foundation, Jeff Gordon started the Jeff Gordon Foundation. He raises quite a bit of money for these charities. Courage, he found, meeting a small boy has helped many since that first meeting with Gil. Courage, where do you find it? When Jimmy was diagnosed with leukemia, we were devastated. We had no idea how to act or what to do, we went through six months of pure hell. But I don't believe I ever saw anyone with more courage than Jimmy had. Never once did he complain or feel sorry for himself or cause us any problem during his illness. He would come to church with us when he could but he was unable to attend school. But he tried to live as normal as he could. Many of you may remember, because Jimmy been sick, we got involved with the organization called His Kids. They have a camp where kids suffering from childhood cancer and siblings go for a week and enjoy themselves. Susan and Kylie got involved, but first because Kylie got asked to go to the sibling camp. And they got involved before I did because I didn't have the courage. They came home and they told stories of what went on during the week. Finally, one day, as I was getting ready to go visit them at the camp in the middle of the week, God spoke to me. And he told me, next year you'll be here. God finally gave me the courage to become involved. There had been Eddie, Paul, Mindy, Kayla, and the list goes on and on. Stoney, another Paul, Jenny, all have stories that can be told. Children sick, 
with distinct different kinds of cancer. Anything from leukemia to brain stem to neuroblastoma to bone cancer attend this camp each year. At nearly every camp you would meet and get to know some child. We in some ways know how Jeff Gordon must have felt meeting Gil, knowing Ray J. With some of these children, you wondered, and it happened each year, which one would not be back next year. I have seen young men and women that volunteer as counselors, activities committee staff, and other positions of leadership break down and cry because of their knowledge of how some of these kids were doing. Yes, courage. I know that there were a lot of prayers during these camps. I don't know God was prayed to each day and asked to do what he could do. Courage. I saw more courage in these children than I ever saw on my high school football team. They tried to make a normal week during camp even when any one of them could become sick enough to have to go home or even to the hospital. Every time I think of something that would make me apprehensive, worried, or scared of, I think about the courage they showed. I remember when I found the courage to finally attend camp, I know God talked to me as I said. I listened and I followed his instructions. Think of the courage Jesus had to have at the end of his life. He had grown up and finally began his ministry. His mission in life that God sent him on earth for. How he withstood all the trials and tribulations, false accusations, is a mystery to me and to all of us. As he stood accused, tried, and found guilty of doing nothing but teaching about God and spreading God's word, how he must have drawn courage from God to get through it all. Courage. Where do we find our courage? Do we ask God for the courage to face our everyday trial and difficulties? We have things every day that we must face. We must look for this courage in the right place. Take time. Talk to God and ask for his help. Thank you. Um, got him 398. Please stand.
It is by God's grace we live. It is by, by God's grace we have faith. It is by God's grace we are given salvation. May we give generously back to God what he has given us first. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the offering that have been given to this day. Pray that you'll just be with us and help us to use them to better your church and your kingdom on earth. In your Son Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
as we sing number 2254 in remembrance of me. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ died for our sins and was buried. Join us in the affirmation of faith. Oh. Christ died for our sins and was buried. buried. Was and raised on the third day and appeared. Appeared first to the women, first to the women, then, and then to, to Peter, Peter and, and the twelve, and then to many, many faithful witnesses. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Anointed One of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body. The church, the church and by, and by the, the blood of the cross reconciles all things, all things to, God. to God. Amen. Um, as you can see, we're not going to do communion this morning. Um, I wasn't prepared to do that. And uh, I elected to wait until next Sunday and let Marty do it when he's back. So um, we'll go for the prayers of the people do we have any if y'all can't tell from what I was talking about please keep the Abbott and the Hagen all families in your prayers today thank you let us pray Gracious Heavenly Father, we have so much to be thankful for that you have given us. We thank you for 
another day that you have letting us come to your house to worship and serve you. Pray that you'll just be with us and, and help us to do what we can do to help others that are in need and, and uh, need prayers or whatever we can do to help them as you have directed in your scriptures. Pray that you'll just be with our nation and help us and as we continue to go through this uh, pandemic and, and guide us all as to be as safe as possible and be with our caregivers and the hospitals and doctor's offices as they continue to uh, care for those that are aff afflicted. We pray that you'll just be with our nation as again as uh, the nation is covered with this pandemic all over and be with the uh, nation and help us to cure the ills that are involved in it and help us all as we continue to go through this be with our our state our county and our city and help our all the politicians to do what they can to better the lives of all of us and be with us as we pray the prayer that your son taught us to pray our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now may the God of us all, who calls us to create a legacy, not for ourselves, but for our God, go with you and be with you now and forevermore. Amen. A uh, few announcements Marty left with me. Uh, as you know, we continue to have children's church. So if you have someone you can bring with you, they know that there is a children's church that follows the children's message. We also have Sunday school that'll be following after the worship service. And we have a contemporary service tonight at five o'clock. We still need Sunday school teachers if someone can volunteer and class materials will be provided both for both the teacher and the students. If you have any maintenance requests, there is maintenance forms to be filled out. And then the hallway here, there is a box that says uh, trustee, put that request in the trustee's box. We still have the uh, Wednesday evening uh, Bible study. Uh, because of the storm last Wednesday, we did it online and had a Zoom meeting, but we did and this week we'll be studying chapter 17 in Revelations. Uh, Pastor Marty will be in the office again on Tuesday and Wednesday. Uh, lay servant training in Melrose Chapel, February the 26th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. March 12th, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. March 29th, 9 a.m. or 26 rather 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. if anybody would be interested in getting started with the um, uh, become what I'm doing now uh, Lenten service Ash Wednesday March the 2nd will be held at Pleasant Grove at 7 p.m. Good Friday April the 15th held at Paloma again at 7 p.m. Sunrise service April the 17th will be held at the Ursa Retreat Center. I believe Marty said last week that it had already been set aside and spoken for at 6 a.m. There will be a continental breakfast following and Easter normal service will be held here at 845. And if some of you haven't seen the uh, last uh, council meeting and the trustees have been meeting 
There will be some changes starting to be made here in the sanctuary. So look forward to those if you haven't seen them. There will be some new lights and lighting done. Anything you can do, if you want to, you can share your ideas on Facebook post. Tell your kids, grandkids to follow us on Instagram, UM Union United Methodist Church, UUMM, UUMC dash Quincy. Invite anyone you know or would like to join us on Sunday worship. Let us all work and try to refill the pews as we used to have. Make our church grow. Thank you.